This is Tim Montgomery. Once the fastest man on the planet, the American sprinter became infamous for his involvement in one of athletics' biggest doping scandals. Banned from competing and stripped of his titles, Montgomery turned to crime and in 2008 was sentenced to eight years in jail. Whilst in prison, Tim reflected on the past and began a journey of redemption. The 41-year-old told us about his life playing against the odds. Tim grew up in Gaffney, South Carolina. Blessed with blinding speed, he became an illicit street racer aged 12, running for money against men twice his age. His race handler recognized Montgomery's money-making potential and accumulated enough cash to become a drug dealer. Tim became his drug runner, heading from the hood to the woods, strapped with marijuana or crack cocaine whenever the police made their raids. Running in the streets, I became popular. I became one of the guys. I was known for my speed. If the police came through, I may take the drugs and run. And it was a game to us. It was the police against us. And then one day, we was out there on the block and my friend had just got a gun. And that was really my first time really seeing a gun, of us having a gun. It was always fist fights or arguments and pushing and shoving, but never no one getting shot. And uh, he got in an argument and shot a guy in the head. It, it just changed by my way of thinking. It changed me forever. Tim took up a scholarship offer at Blinn College in Texas and later transferred to Norfolk State University in Virginia. In 1994, aged 19, he ran the 100 meters in 9.96 seconds, becoming the first teenager to break the 10 second barrier. Two years later, he was selected for the 4x100 relay team at the Atlanta Olympics. Although Montgomery won silver and gold relay medals at the Atlanta and Sydney Games, respectively, he only ran in the heats. I really wanted to be this, this great sprinter, but I really didn't want to put in the work to be the great sprinter. So, 97 came and I took a bronze medal in World Championship, went on from there, received a huge contract, had all this money, and my world just turned to from track star to rock star. I was living a double life. And I didn't see my performance getting even better. 1999, I was watching World Championships and I seen Marion Jones run 100 meters. And I'm like, who's our coach? And it happened to be Trevor Graham. They happened to train in North Carolina. And I got down there in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it was an eye opener. It was, this is what track and field is. This is what you've been missing. This is the dark side of track and field. Do you want it? And I say, yes, I do. Tim was introduced to Victor Conte, the founder of Balco, a nutritional supplements company. In 2001, Conte began providing Montgomery with regular doses of THG, a steroid that at the time was undetectable. Once I got on performance enhancing drugs, that was the biggest key to performance. I took Victor word as, hey, take this right here and you're gonna run fast. And I didn't care about if it killed me or what it done to me. All I wanted was speed. All I wanted was power. In 2002, Montgomery broke the 100 meters world record at the IAAF Grand Prix final in Paris, running 9.78.
Also that year, he began a relationship with Marion Jones, a multiple Olympic champion and the planet's foremost female sprinter. They became the highest profile couple in track and field and had a child together in 2003. However, after the FBI raided Balco's headquarters in San Francisco, Montgomery was charged with using illegal performance-enhancing drugs by the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. Tim decided to appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, but at the end of 2005, he was found guilty, banned from competing for two years, and stripped of his titles. The legal fees for the case amounted to over $2 million. I turned back into a criminal. I got around the people that was criminals and said, hey, how are y'all making money? I got involved into a check scheme, got caught for that. I was in, I was in jail for probably three hours and released. So I'm like, oh, cool. You get in trouble, you got money, you'll be released. So now I'm fighting that case and I need money now to fight that case. It just start piling on. So I turn to the streets and say, hey, what is the biggest seller in the streets? They say, if you want to make the most money in the streets, you got to sell heroin. I'm like, oh, that's what we're going to do then. And when they put the cuffs on me for selling heroin and told me how bad heroin was, how much time I was facing, I really, really wanted to die then. In October 2008, Montgomery was sentenced to eight years in jail. His relationship with Marion Jones had long since fallen apart, and Tim was at an all-time low. And I never had an anxiety attack before in my life. <laughs> I've been in the Olympic Games, I've been in some very big moments, and this, I had a anxiety attack for the first time in my life. And I really was trying to find a way to end my life. And I end up giving my life to God. And from that moment right there, jail changed. Montgomery spent four and a half years in prison. During that time, he married Jamali, whom he'd first met back in 1999, and the couple have had two children together. Tim is currently putting the finishing touches to his autobiography, which is written in collaboration with Liam Collins. In 2015, Collins went undercover to investigate the current levels of doping in sport. His findings, broadcast in the controversial Al Jazeera documentary The Dark Side, suggested that some of the planet's leading sportsmen were using performance-enhancing drugs. When Liam was reporting back, telling me everything they was doing in track and field, it blew my mind. The world record 100 meters with the knowledge that I know now, it's 9 one something. In, in Rio, you may see 958 smash. And I don't know if he's doing anything, but after watching and studying him, 958 wasn't even the run for him. That was the setup for retirement, which you will see in Rio. Montgomery lays the blame for athletics' ongoing doping crisis firmly at the feet of its governing body. When you got a sport that the agents control, shoe companies control, and you get little, very little from your federation, then it's out of control. And track and field, there's no structure. It's just every man for themselves. self. 
since being released from jail, Tim has returned to the track, establishing a personal training company in Gainesville, Florida, that caters for all ages and abilities, from young athletes aspiring to join the pro ranks to office workers looking to get in shape. Numa Speed stands for never underestimate my ability. I underestimate my ability as a human being, as a person. I only see myself as a athlete. My performance was me. And when you only see your performance being you and not you being you, then you're not being successful. I want to bring Numa Speed to everyone. And I'm not saying just bring the athletic part to everyone. I want to bring the aspect of you having someone to talk to that's going to give you the real information. And bring it here. You just don't bring it all the way here. As soon as you see it, you bring it back. Montgomery makes no excuses for his failings in life. He's been guilty of greed, arrogance, and reckless ambition. But having recognized the need to change, Tim is laying the foundations for lasting fulfillment during this next phase of his life. <laughs> when I came home, my kids didn't know me. So I'm getting to know my kids. I'm going back, taking care of my parents because they had to take care of me. And I understand that family is everything. I understand that my actions, I'm responsible for them. I want to use my knowledge for good. There you go. See how the noise changed from. Good work. Thank you.